Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here on CrossFit Garage where I am trying to help you lay a firm foundation in fitness, food, and finances. We're going back into fitness. This one, much like the one about Grace, is going to be about Fran and how to get a better Fran time. So probably the biggest thing in Fran is people want to get Fran unbroken. And unbroken means you did everything, the 21-15-9 of thrusters and pull-ups without, well, I mean, obviously you have to stop to go between the elements, but you did all thrusters together and all pull-ups together. So much of the strategy is gonna help, is gonna be designed around how to help you get there. So go back and listen to the one about Grace. If you wanna hear these tips and tricks, I'm gonna go a little bit quicker because you should have already heard this stuff, but here's how to get a, um, a faster friend time. First, use the 35 pound bar. It's a smaller grip. You're gonna be gripping on that pull-up rig, so you need to really figure out your grip and make it okay. The other is don't grip the bar that dang hard. It should be up and above your head, so you just have to clean it-ish one time. So it should save your grip a bit, so don't grip too tight, right? And you wanna punch to the top on the thruster just enough to hit the right spot, and it should be all on your butt. So it should be uh, legs, butt, uh, and core driving the bar up, not your arms. So that's the technique part of it on the thruster. Make it your lower portion, not your upper portion that's really doing the work. Um, if you can, get a smaller diameter bar on the pull-up rig. So look around to see if any of them are a little bit smaller. That's going to save your grip. The other thing I like to do is pre-chalk the entire bar. So in our gym, actually, let me see if I can find a picture of our gym. I'll show you what I do. All right, that works. I got a, a, um, a Google virtual tour, and it doesn't exactly look like this, but the pull-up rig's in the right place. So you can see there's different bars. Our bars, even though there's black ones and red ones, they're actually all of the same dimension, so it doesn't help, but I did buy one rogue bar that was thinner specifically to see um, if that would help, especially the smaller hands like me or the ladies, and they said it did. So I, I'm, I'm a big believer, and I know this is um, true for me. I dropped my grace time by almost like two minutes when I moved to the thinner bar. So that's the other podcast. But anyway, use a smaller bar, pre-chalk, put your hands, um, um, chalk your hands if you want to, great. The thrusters, you don't need to chalk the, the, the Olympic bar, but you do want to chalk the, um, the rig. And what I do is I go all the way across the rig. So I've got from all the way to the far left, all the way to the end on the right. And what I'll do is I'll jump up for the first set of pull-ups on the left side, then I'll go a little bit over, and then by the next one, I'm in, the last one, I'm sort of in the middle or on that right side, right? So every time I jump up, there's fresh chalk for me to already have on my hands. And staying on the bar is pretty dang important because if you're not on the bar, you can't be doing pull-ups. All right, I already mentioned this one, the legs and core, so make sure you're driving. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know what that means, have somebody watch you, and it sh you should be jumping the bar off the ground. Your heels should leave the ground because you're driving so much, you go to your toes. You shouldn't leave the ground completely. It should be just enough, right? And you gotta experiment with the just enough. You should be using very little arms in the thruster because you're gonna need them, your shoulders anyway, and the pull-ups. Okay, so, um, uh, these, you also want to breathe on the way down, take a big breath. A lot of people forget to breathe. So when are you going to breathe? Practice it. Breathe on the way down. On the pull-ups, you've same sort of thing. It, you're, pull, you're breathing at a place. I will breathe on the way down and then um, hold it on the, pulling the way back up. But you may find you like something different, right? The other is less shoes or don't wear shoes. Now, on the grace, it was because you're removing the uh, inch of distance in your heels. This is, you're just being lighter because you got to do pull-ups. So I would recommend um, like a very light shirt and shorts or maybe no shirt, but have a place to wipe your hands, like have a towel out because you're going to want to do that. I, if you're going to do it unbroken and super quick, then wipe your hands on your shirt. You're not even really going to sweat if you get done. Like I did this one time, my friend time, uh, a long time ago, um, best I ever did was two minutes and 33 seconds. I didn't sweat. I didn't even really breathe hard. But what I did do is deplete every energy store in my body. I laid on the floor for two classes, so two hours, and had to have somebody drive me home. I was so messed up. I vowed then I would never do it again, so I don't. Um, anyway, uh, I, I could probably right now do a sub fran because I've been doing CrossFit for 17 years and I know my body pretty well. I think the biggest piece is you need to know your body. Anyway, so take your shoes off. Um, so this becomes the next port. Well, okay, I assume you can do a um, 95 pound thruster. If that's troubling for you, then this isn't going to work at all. Um, I also assume you can do pull-ups. If you can't do pull-ups, then this doesn't really work at all. So I can do, I don't know, like I think I did um, 36 pull-ups without breaking one time just the other day, just for funsies, because we had to do 50 pull-ups. Like, oh, I'll do as many as I can before stopping. Dumb idea, but I was curious. And it was in the middle of a workout, so I was super warmed up. It's like, yeah, I'll give it a shot, whatever. Um, oh, I know what I did that. It was um, because I wanted to show in Helen, 
you do 12 pull-ups three times, that's 36. So I was trying to get to 36 or more, but actually weirdly landed right on 36 and then came off the bar. Anyway, pull-ups aren't a problem for me. So if they're a problem, that's totally different. You gotta go work on your pull-ups. This is assuming, hey, I can do pull-ups. I've got a kipping pull-up, I've got a butterfly pull-up. First step would be move from um, kipping or swinging kipping into your butterfly pull-up. Butterfly pull-ups are twice as fast, but they do put a huge burden on your biceps, which is why you need to like relax your arms on the thruster. Okay. So understanding, hey, I can do butterfly pull-ups, thrusters at 95 pounds aren't a big deal. If I asked you, hey, could you do 21 thrusters at 95 pounds? You're like, yeah, I could totally do that. If I said, hey, could you do 21 pull-ups? Yeah, I could do that. Then great, I'm talking to you. If you don't have those things yet, you need to work it backwards and pick up the skill set. First is the uh, pull-up, and that's gonna be a combination of, of everything, really. It's the strength, your weight, and the gymnastics component to that, either swinging kip or the butterfly pull-up. And the thruster, it's all about uh, strength and just enduring under the suck, and because uh, they 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 are rough. Is there a thing known as Fran lungs? When you get done with it, if you've done it really fast, you're gonna feel like you've got like a flu-like symptom in your like throat and lungs. It's not flu, but man, it is crazy. But uh, okay, so moving on. So if you want to get Fran unbroken, and this would uh, should give you a better time because not stopping is great, um, then this is what I would do. And this differs from Grace because in Grace, when you're doing a clean and jerk, it has to touch the ground again. When you do a thruster, it doesn't. It stays in your front rack position, so the bar doesn't have to touch the ground, so you don't want to drop it. But here's what I would do. You start off with, okay, I'm going to take it easy and just get a baseline. The entire workout, thrusters and pull-ups, this is, you know, I'm using it for both. You're gonna start off by doing seven sets of three, that gives you your 21, and then five sets of three, that gives you your 15 of each, and then you're gonna to try to do all nine thrusters and pull-ups. If you can't do all nine thrusters and pull-ups, then your fitness isn't there yet, and you need to just stay here until you can get all those nine done. If you can get those nine done, you can move on to the next thing. And actually, before I move, tell you the next steps, let's look at this, I found this to be pretty interesting. On this website here, they talk about the uh, distribution of times for Fran, Fran for males. Basically, you're going to be in the four to four minutes and thirty seconds time domain is going to be the majority of us. Weirdly, for ladies, and if you're on YouTube, you can see this. Um, they've got a, a decent uh, or normal kind of uh, curve, but um, there are two weird spikes or three, I guess. So very few people do uh, two thirty um, or below, and then at three minutes, there's a spike above the four minute and further like behind. So it's interesting, it spikes up and then drops back down. The two biggest spikes are at four minutes and then uh, 5.30. So it's, it's interesting. I guess it's gonna be a phenomenon of I can move the weight but I can't do pull-ups versus I can move the weight and pull-ups, right? I don't know, but it's fascinating to look at their, um, their uh, uh, distribution plot here or bar graph. Okay, so the next thing that I would do is um, if I did all nine, I made it, I'm like, good, I got it. Every time I do Fran, I'm gonna try to get, I'm gonna do that exact same setup, try to get all nine at the end. If I can get all nine at the end, then I move on. The thing, the way I move it on is I still do seven by one, so or seven by three, so I'm gonna do you know three thrusters, three thrusters, three thrusters, seven times, and then three pull-ups, three pull-ups, three pull-ups. The reason is I'm trying not to gas myself out. I have to have stuff left in the tank because I have seen so many people go, yeah, I can do 21, I could do those unbroken. And then they fall apart and look like, you know, somebody beat them with a baseball bat and they're like, I can't, I can't, I'm just totally spent. I'm like, right, don't spend yourself out. That's, it's a, it's a trap, don't do that. You're gonna do better by going a little bit slower. Again, what is it, uh, uh, smooth is slow and slow is fast or slow is smooth and smooth is fast, whatever the saying is. You want to be methodical in this. Okay, so anyway, do the, the 21 the same way, seven sets of three, and then you do the 15 and instead of five sets of three, you're gonna do three sets of five. That way you're putting a little bit more pressure on yourself and then all nine. If you can't make it, do it again and keep staying there until you can. Your fitness will rise up, right? Um, if you did make it, then the next time you do the 21, just like I told you, and then you're gonna do eight and then seven. So now you see what we're doing, we're creating a bigger set and then all nine. If you can do that, obviously, yeah, you guys are playing along the game, right? So it's do the 21, like I said before, seven, seven sets of three, and then what do you do on the 15? Yeah, that's right, some of you said it, you do all 15. If you can do all 15 and then all nine, thumbs up, double thumbs up, you, you're doing the right thing, it's the way to go and you can move forward. If you can't, then you stay there and you figure out what is the problem, right? In all of this, you do need to realize yourself Typically, in this, it's a uh, it's an engine problem. The weight is light enough, and the gymnastic movement isn't that terrible. It becomes I either can't hold on to the bar, 
or I have lost um, all of my uh, glycogen and phosphate or glycolytic and phosphogen uh, supplies, my uh, you know fight or flight energy, that anaerobic energy, and I just crushed myself. You don't want to crush yourself. You need to have some left over for this. So anyway, you do this 21 and seven, seven sets of three, 15 and then nine. And then you start mixing in, if you can do that, start mixing in some work for the, uh, the 21. We want to reduce the seven sets into something less, something like five, 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 three, three, right? So you do 15 and then six, right? So it's sets of fives and then uh, threes. If you can do that, the next, the, uh, I really like doing it like this. You do like an eight, seven, six. And then for the 21, you're gonna do 11, 10, and then you'll do all 21. So you're gonna build that up. Still doing 15 and nine all together. So you're trying to figure out how fast can I go without depleting myself at the end. Most everyone's gonna find out I cannot do 21 straight and still be able to do the 15 and nine. What you don't wanna do is do the 21 and then be stuck there going, well, I guess I'm just really tired and sore and I can't do anything else. That's going to ruin your time, I mean, from the get-go. So this is, you do the end all together, then the middle all together, and then the beginning all together. And that's how I've helped other people get pretty dang good times. My, I think I already said my time was 2 minutes and 33 seconds back in, I don't know, it was a while ago, but let's see if I can find the gym leaderboard. Um, read off some of these times for Fran. There we are. So, um, yeah, so 233 for me, and I don't know if I could do that anymore. I could probably do a sub five Fran without breaking a sweat, which I do have to watch out. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I took it easy and I did sub five and I don't mean it like that. Like, oh, you just so, no, it's just, I've done it enough. I know the tricks to it. I know my body. I think that's the biggest thing of all this is you know your body. I know that strength is my weakness, but the funny like circus tricks, like, like, uh, um, uh, the pull-ups, I can't think of the name, of butterfly pull-ups, that's a circus trick. I can do those. Weirdly, I could ride a unicycle and juggle when I was a kid. These things translate, but I've never been a big guy, and that translates as well. It means I simply can't lift that much weight. So an easy way to beat me in any workout is say, hey, we're going to do 155 pounds overhead. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty much out. I can do like one every like 30 seconds. Um, so let's see. We've got uh, on the guy side for our Fran times, uh, uh, Nick Ar uh, Armenta, he's got 341. Louis Judge, he's got 414. Matt, ooh, nice Matt. Um, Matt also has the record grace time that you heard before. So he is a super strong guy. And uh, that's 433. He and I would be the opposites of each other. So he's like Superman, and I'm like um, Robin. <laughs> I, I'm just a circus kid. Um, Let's see. So Joe has got uh, 452. Nick Lubbers is four, oh, 452 as well. That's interesting. Tom, man, four, 453. Well, one second. Aaron Vincent, uh, 459. John M., which I can't, uh, oh, man, John Mastro. I can't say her last name. He's 518. And this is just in our system. He's been doing CrossFit for a while, so he probably has a better time than before. And Josh. So Josh is like nine feet tall. So anybody says, hey, tall people can't do this because it's a thruster, man, that is wrong. This guy moves so dang well. So Josh Stidham has got to 534. And legitimately, when he puts his arms all the way up in a thruster, he's probably going two feet more. So what is that? 25, that's 45 times two. That's 90 feet of movement that he has to do that I don't have to do. 90 feet. So I don't know. For me, I'm only five. So that's, uh, it's like, 20 more reps? That's insane <laughs> to catch up to that amount. Wait, 20? That'd be 100? Yeah, about 20 reps. Maybe like 18. Anyway, on the ladies' side, um, doing it, this is RX. So we got Sharon, way to go. Sharon Smith, she's got 429. Danny Walsh, 430. Jamie Armenta, uh, 447. Laura Wolf, 636. Rebecca Gerard, 723. Allison, uh, well, actually, Allison, I think I, your, your name changed. But uh, 827. And uh, Kelly Teresi, uh, 924. So, should you do these workouts, Fran, Grace, Unbroken, or go for RX or whatever? I mean, yeah, it's a named workout. Why not? This becomes something totally different than just fitness. It's a it's a tester. So yeah, you should do it. Even if it takes you 15 minutes, at least then you know. What was the problem? Usually it's pull-ups in this case. So let's work on that gymnastics component. I would first start with swinging, kipping pull-ups. Really work on that swing and the kip. Most people just say kipping pull-ups. There's a swing and there's a kip. Make sure you're using them both. Typically, girls do really well on the swing and guys do really well on the kip put those together. And then thruster, be super efficient with that. Get it on your shoulders. Let your leg do the work. Don't hold the bar in front of you. Rack that puppy, right? And then drive with your thighs, your butt, and get it above you. Don't use your arms to press it up. It shouldn't be a weight problem. It should be, I ran out of energy problem. And that's what you would do to really like, really toss down a uh, Fran. 
If you want help, in, if you're a member and you want help on this or any other movements, workouts, whatever, let me know. I'm happy to give you 30 minutes of my time. Uh, no charge. It's because I love you. And we can work on this stuff. Be warmed up, though, because we're going to jump right in it. Or even better, um, if I'm coaching on Saturday, I will do a skills class or some sort of class after, specifically on a thing, whether it's like, I don't know, pulling yourself under the bar on the clean or um, the one coming up, which actually probably has passed when, <laughs> when this thing posts. But um, it's skills for the open. So whatever it is that you're trying to work on, come. I will help you out with right so guys i am here for you if you're in the general populace and you're like hey i've done crossfit where i was a member before yeah let me know i will work on helping you it'll probably cost you something because i mean i'll give it to my members because they already pay for membership so buy a membership or sign up for some pt right if you've never done crossfit before and you're looking for help and stuff that's a totally different scenario we are here to help and coach and guide you i would probably say in that case do some personal training with anybody anyone in our gym is gonna be awesome or any of the coaches Actually, probably members too. They they learn really quick and they're really good at movement. But if you ever want to shortcut a process, hire a coach or a mentor and they're going to get you through the process way faster than you'd ever get yourself. And you'd skip all the stupid steps because they're just going to tell you what to do, right? Or tell you how to do it better. And they can watch you. Like today we were doing, um, oh man, what is it? We were doing uh, cleans, in this case, a squat clean. And um, I was showing a couple of guys like, Hey, this is how high you're pulling like up to your chest. And then you're squatting down and I would put the mark on my hips. I'm like, so this, you've got like a foot and a half of difference. Your goal is to minimize that. You want to only pull the bar far enough up so that you can squeeze yourself under. And they're like, okay, I can do that. And the reason I gave them that next bigger tip is because their form was awesome. They were on their heels when they were lifting, their back's in the right place, their arms are straight, they're diving under the bar somewhat and they're driving their elbows up and making a great stand. It looked beautiful. So it's like, hey, here's the next step if you want it, right? And so anyway, that's beautiful to see people move well like this. All right, if you want Unbroken Fran, that's the process. If you want a better grace time, I have other process. Go listen to another uh, 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 podcast. If you just want help in general, I'm here for you. If you're brand new off the street, the gym is here for you. Uh, let me pull this up, see if I can find it. It was under, yeah, right here. So this right here is, uh, we are, it's, our, it's our motto. We are happy, humble, helpful people who want to be healthy and fit now as well as in our 90s. Our mission is to help you become the hero of your own story in health and fitness. Well, in this podcast, it's fitness, food, and finances because if you're going to have fitness and food, you're going to live a long time. You better have money when you live a long time. Otherwise, you're going to be a burden on somebody. Or on the flip side is if you're going to work hard and make a lot of money, then you're just going to give it to somebody else when you die. So you better have fitness and food to help you live a long time and enjoy that money. That's what the podcast is covering. Um, I do have um, a guest coming on, um, Scott from Jubilee Church, who does uh, financial peace and I'm like, hey, that's finances. That's part of what we do. So I'm going to have him on the podcast. Actually, he might have already been on it by the time this comes out because the world of podcasting is asynchronous in time. I'm doing this podcast on the 29th and I did the Grace one on the 29th, but I don't even know when I'm going to put him into the sequence. The, the, the information is timeless, so it doesn't matter when it hits. It just matters that you listen and you try. Again, though, I would say the biggest part of all of this is understanding your body. Where is your strength and where is your weakness? And work on that. My weakness is strength. At 50, I'm okay with that. I don't really want to PR anymore, but I know that lifting heavy is good for me. Lifting heavy and going below parallel, like on a squat, is good for me. So I make sure I'm feeling good. I make sure I'm very warm. I wear a lot of clothes to stay warm. And then I listen to my body as I'm lifting. I'm also asking the coach, hey, did I do anything stupid? And they're like, nope. I'm like, right, great, I'm going to continue on. All right, guys, we are here for you. You can find us at CrossFitGarage.com or Facebook or Instagram. Or if you go to our uh, website, my email address and my phone number is all over that. That's actually my email address and phone number. Call, text, whatever. Happy to help. And all you guys that are out there that um, are doing Breadbeckers, man, I love having you on this journey with us. I um, already helped a couple of you guys find gyms near you. Um, it's what I do. So when... When N equals one, this stuff is hard. Like, hey, if I only did, if I only cut a tree down one time, N equals one. I only did it once. I don't know what I'm doing. When N equals a thousand, watching reps or helping people find gyms, yeah, it's pretty easy. I know what to look for. I can look at a website and almost tell you uh, yes or no just just from the website. So anyway, I'm happy to help you guys. All right, y'all take care. Thanks for your time and your attention.